Hey Kotaku, Evan Narciss here. We're going to take a look at the STEM system, which is a new motion control input system meant to work with the Oculus Rift and other applications. It could be the first steps towards bringing us towards the holodeck. So we're going to take a look at it right now. So as you can see, you've got your hands in the scene now. So you can actually hold your hands up, kind of hold them in front of your eyes, rotate your hands, use them like you would actually use your hands. And you can use both hands as well. If you look straight down, you'll see that you actually have a body. Uh, it's the wrong color. <laughs> so you can use your body to kind of position yourself um, relative to objects to grab them. Oh man, that feels weird. So you want to walk closer to it a little more. So take another step forward in the game. One more, there you go. Now reach all the way down to the floor and grab that guy. Perfect. Yeah. You get a little bit of haptic feedback, almost like it's just simulating the grain of the, the thing. You can uh, switch hands. If you grab with your other hand, you can let go with your right switch back and forth. And if you want to throw that ball, just throw it like you'd actually throw a ball. That's not actually how I throw a ball. And try with that uh, baseball on the table as well. The depth thing is, a, is, a, is the freakiest thing. Oh man. All right, so if you want to head outside. Well, else feels nauseous? Where do you think solutions like connect or move or any other mainstream thing on the market right now, where do you think that they drop the ball? They drop the ball and, 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 and maybe it's not a good thing for me to say, but they dropped the ball by being part of a Sony or a Microsoft. Because those companies are, you know, they're about a p and and the bottom line, and not so much about, and again, I'm a big fan of uh, Shu Yoshida, the, yeah. Yeah. you know, the, the head of uh, Sony. Uh, Sony Studios and, and all that, but, you know, he's tied also with, with, with the demands that he has management. to answer it too. Exactly, so yeah. for me, the move is a great product. And I think the move could have been a great product. They just, they dropped the ball by not explaining the community what it is. Is it a, a casual, like a Wii, or is it a hardcore uh, right. gamer uh, enthusiast? Peripheral, yep. peripheral. Is it part of the platform, or is it peripheral? Nobody got it. It was such a fuzzy marketing message. Nobody understood it. I, as the technology guy, tell you, it's a beautiful product from, from motion tracking. Fusion of gyro with camera, it's a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, and, 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 and a great execution on the Sony part. Kinect is not a gaming peripheral. Microsoft did a decent job. The, the amount of data you get from Kinect, even the upcoming Kinect, of course, we also in, in, in the last E3, it's still, you know, it's got such small amount of information and so much environmental dependencies. Right. A little too much light, not enough light. You know, 50% of the people cannot be cannot can be trained. It's a very complicated. Too much space, not enough space. So this is Make VR. It's an immersive modeling system that lets you reach into the world with your hands. So you can see Scott's got a pair of cursors that are being driven by the STEM uh, prototypes, uh, both position and orientation. And that means he can just reach in and grab an object oh. in his hand. Uh, he can grab another object in the other hand, swap hands all the usual things and if he grabs one with both hands he can stretch it oh wow right and rotate it make VR is more than just assembling objects in a scene just placing them it's a full-on CAD system that's built into it so that means that you can designate an object to cut another object and you can see absolute precision so this is actually a very high-end CAD system but being presented with a very natural interface so he's just made some cuts subtracted added something to it and now he'll take a slice out of that oh right okay so and using these very simple operations and others sweeps and deformation and those kinds of things you can build just about anything you can think up you can see that turtle is sitting on the table right over here uh, one of our interns built that they built it inside the program. They built that inside the program, exported it, and then printed it out on a 3D printer. So this is kind of object creation and object manipulation. Your viewpoint uh, is another thing that's very cool about uh, Make VR. So he can just grab the world with one hand, oh, wow. kind of push it and pull it, like multi-touch, you know, just like on your uh, uh, iPhone or iPad. If he grabs with both hands, he can rotate. So now he just rotates around the world. And if he grabs and stretches the world, he can scale it. So he's just going to go oh, inside man. its mouth. Uh, these operations just take a lot more time and are a lot less flexible with a mouse and keyboard. 
This is actually designed for full immersion. So we have a toolbox that floats over your hand. It's self-contained. Everything you need is inside. And when you're in the Rift, that's exactly what you see. So the interface is meant to be used uh, from a first-person perspective. That's right. That's exactly right. And uh, the two-handed interface, this navigation uh, um, technique, the, two, the two-handed interface, makes it so that, you, that one of the results is you don't get sick, because you're grabbing the world and pushing and pulling it around. You're not driving a viewpoint through a world and then having what you see be different from what you're feeling in right. your head. Uh, you, you have no more, uh, uh, you, you get no more sick than if you were to pick up a coffee cup and shake it around, because you're, you're just moving the world around. Um, and so you can work in Make VR for eight hours straight without feeling any uh, you know, twinges of, uh, of nausea, one of the, one of the real uh, side effects of this. And it's, which is lucky because you, you don't model for five minutes at a time. Yeah, so all you did was, was, was clip the, the donut shape through the cylinder shape and now you've got a, 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 a way through, yeah. Okay. That's right. And in the Rift, I mean, that's more than just pixels on the screen, that feels huge. You know, it feels like you're surrounded by things. If you look at something that's big, it feels big. It's not just, uh, you know, it, it isn't just covering more of the screen. You're looking up at it and feeling its size. We will be adding uh, sure. physics to it, and, as well as uh, collaboration. So you'll be able to be in this scene with other people in other cities and other countries, uh, and that you'll see their avatars. Uh, and as they grow the world the way Scott just did, you'll see them shrink. And you might be working on his shoulder, you know, putting a new epaulette on it, and then look under his chin and find three of your friends, you know, tiny and tiny size, working on the, uh, the piping under the chin. That's, that's pretty cool. We would like to be able to get as many talented people, create content, create games. We believe the indie community is where innovation is going to come for VR. Yeah. I don't feel stupid at all. <laughs> oh, you can put your hands on in front of you. Thanks. We're not going to tell anybody. It's, it, we'll, we'll only put it on the internet. What the hell? Is that mayonnaise? Why the hell is there mayonnaise on this? Why would you ever put mayonnaise on this? 